Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over three different ways to get a files extension when writing a shell script. Two of these solutions are going to be POSIX compliant, and one of them is going to lean on bash specific features. Throughout the video, we're gonna go over some pros and cons, and you can pick whatever solution that you like, depending on your preference or use case. So yeah, let's play around with some one-liners here and maybe set up some variable here just to have some file name, hello.csv, doesn't really matter what it is here. And yeah, maybe now we can just start, you know, some baseline reasonable thing here where it's like, we're just echo uh, our variable out. And now we can start playing around with some features here of bash where we can say you know what all right i just want to get let's say the last three characters of the string here so you can just do the colon here and then yeah last three characters that space there is very important by the way and here you can see like cool we're getting the last three characters if you wanted to include the dot there you can just do the last four characters and you're good to go by the way yeah the space is important if we don't put it it's going to return the entire file name alternatively if you don't want to use a space you can wrap this in parentheses here and that is going to work the same now, let's say that uh, you wanna get the opposite of this. Maybe you just wanna get the string, in this case, hello. You don't wanna get the file extension. Then uh, yeah, we can totally do that as well, leaning on very similar features here. In this case, we wanna say that we wanna start at the first character, basically zero indexed. And then we also just wanna get uh, rid of the last four characters there. And that is going to give us our hello here. You know, if we did three here instead, then it's going to include the dot. Of course, depending on whatever use case that you want, feel free to alternate between whatever values that you want here. So some pros and cons. Yeah, it's pretty clean, just, you know, leaning on some standard bash features not really specific to file extensions just you know standard string manipulations that, that you might have used before pretty handy there uh, the con is a little bit less portable, right? It's going to require bash compatible shell that won't work with regular shell. Not a big deal, you know, but it is something to be mindful of. You know, another potential downside though, or, you know, con of this solution is we kind of have to know how long the file extension is ahead of time. So in this case, you know, CSV is three characters, PNG is three characters, JPG is three characters, but you know, there are other file extensions that have two characters or four characters. And you know, if you're trying to write a general purpose solution here and you're not sure if it's going to be two, three, four, five, like, you know, however many characters it is, then uh, yeah, this is not going to be too flexible there. So yeah, now let's go over a POSIX compliant solution, which is going to be a little bit more flexible there. You know, it's going to have a dynamically supported value there for the file extensions length and um, cool. Okay. So let's go back to our baseline here, which was just echoing this out. Now, instead of using bash specific features, we're going to use shell specific features here where you can just be like, like, you know what? All right, pound, pound, star, dot. And then boom, we have the file extension. Or if you want to do the opposite of that one, you can do parenthesis, parenthesis, but you can't just do star dot. You have to do uh, dot star here. And there we go. Cool. And we're done. Um, but yeah, no, it's kind of funny. You know, this syntax is, uh, yeah, it, it's syntax. So I find myself needing to do this every once in a while in a shell script where it's like, yeah, I actually do want to get the file extension. And uh, I find myself needing to Google the syntax because I always forget it's like, well, when I use pound pound, is it like star dot or is it dot star? And then there's also like subtle differences between if you use two pounds and one pound, you know, maybe that's a reasonable thing that we can go over to as well. Like for example, and here, or actually before we get to that example, I just do want to demonstrate that this does work if your file extension has, you know, multiple, like not just three characters, right? So in this case, it's like CSV one to three, we can extract all of those out. If we do the opposite of that, you know, with this, then this is going to just give us hello, just like we saw before. But what's interesting too about this, which by the way is nice, right? That's pretty flexible. But you know, you might be thinking like, well, what if your file name happens to have not quite two extensions, but maybe you have two dots in there or something like a tar.gz. So, you know, going back to our example before of this way, you know, that will return CSV. But uh, yeah, let's just like change our file name to be tar.gz in this case. You know, that's just going to return the GZ part. But let's say that you want the tar part to be included there as well. So in that case, you could actually just end up using one pound symbol instead of two. And then that is going to give us what we want. And then also in the reverse of that one, you know, going back to this example here where we need to flip that over, uh, here we can see we do get back hello which is, uh, you know, just the file name of that part there. But if you did want to get the dot tar there included, then technically you can just remove one of these as well. And then you'll get that back, which is uh, pretty neat. You know, this is quite flexible, isn't it? Like we can, you know, now have a dynamic file extension length. We can also choose to get, you know, different parts of that, depending on our preference here. I kind of like this solution, to be honest. It's also portable, right? Posits compliant shell doesn't require calling out to any external processes. If I'm writing a shell script to do this type of thing, where it's like, maybe I need to get the file name with and without the extension, or maybe just the extension or something, uh, I will reach for this. You know, it is something I do every once in a while. You know, once it's written there in the script, you know, it's not too bad to understand really what it's doing once you see the outputs of how it works. But uh, there is another solution that we can do here, maybe a little bit easier to parse if you just want to get the file extension out, what that is POSIX compliant. So let's go back to 
you know, just our baseline before where, you know, we're just echoing out this here. So yeah, you can actually use base name to get the file name out without the extension. For example, let's just do base name here, like hello.csv. Now this is going to return literally hello.csv, but you can actually pass in a file extension to base name and it'll extract out the file for you without the extension. Now this is pretty funny too, because if you think, well, all right, that's cool, but what if I just want to get the file extension? But then it's like, but you already know the file extension because like you have to pass it in as a second argument here. So depending on your use case here, that could be, I guess, pretty useful from time to time. You know, this is a little bit easier to mentally parse and remember the syntax versus the other one, which is a little bit harder to remember, at least in my opinion. There's also one interesting benefit of using base name here. For example, you know, if this were a path that had multiple uh, directories like, you know, temp or whatever, this will continue to extract out just the file without the extension, just due to how base name works, right? That's pretty useful. But if we go back to this other example here, um, let's just say, I don't know, this one here, uh, which will give us hello, then, you know, if this were inside of a directory, let's just say, then, you know, that's not going to extract out just the file from the path. The path is still going to be there. But, you know, again, this is one of those interesting things where, you know, depending on your use case, maybe you actually do want the path to be included, or maybe you don't. But now we have a whole bunch of different options that you can do. You know, going back to what I mentioned before, you know, I will probably reach for this type of solution here in a script. But yeah, the base name solution, if you want to extract things out to where, you know, the path is removed, totally reasonable option there to get going. So yeah, with that said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.